Have you ever used something for such a long time and then out of the blue, you learn something new about that very thing? Well, that's the exact impact that I hope to have on you with this video where I share things that you may not already know about Revit. Welcome to Power Search. My name is Serge, and on this channel, I share everything that I know about Revit. If you are visiting, why not subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future content? Save to new file, export model from sheet. Let's say you would like to issue your 3D model, but do not want to share your template and families. Create a view template where all content is turned off. Apply this to the 3D view. Create a sheet and turn off the title block. Give your sheet and 3D view a name. If you are interested in this workflow, why not check out my video on how to protect your IP. After watching this video, check out the link on your screen now. Once the view has been added to the sheet, remove the view marker, then right click on the sheet name and choose save to new file. Then sit back and watch as Revit exports your 3D view settings into a new Revit file. Once the export has finished, close the active file and open the export in a new project. And as shown, the new file has no template and no content. Can you think of any other applications for this tool? If so, please share in the comments. Who did that? Work sets, ownership and editor. Always a point of contention. When sharing a Revit model with others, here I show you how to identify who created and edited an element within a workset. Ensure you are in a workshed model. Then go to the work sharing display and choose the owner's setting. Then as you drag your mouse cursor over an element, you can identify creator and editor. Imagine just for a second to be able to walk up to someone and say, why did you do that? And you've got the evidence to back it up. Entire wall. Dimension an entire wall with one click. From the ribbon, find the annotation tab. Then pick the aligned button and then on the options bar, pick individual reference to release the drop down. From there, pick entire walls. Then simply select a wall with multiple openings. And so dimensioning floor plans no longer has to be a laborious exercise. Alternate units. Dimension two units in the same string. Edit the dimension type properties. Find the alternate units parameter and revise the settings that you wish to change. Now, the same dimension string returns a value in two formats. This is especially useful to cross-check dimensions. Save as library group. Export an in-place element into your content library. First, create an in-place family and make it parametric.
Once made, flex to ensure that the parameter works as it should. Then edit the family and group it. Provide a suitable name and then while still in edit mode, select the file tab and scroll down to save as. From there, slide across to library where a side dialog will appear. From here, choose group. You now have the option to save as a .rfa, which is Revit's extension for Revit families. I absolutely love this function. Many of my team have been able to create basic content this way, and this function allows that content to be shared, saving the team hours. And now we can open the exported family to show the final result. As shown, the family has exported with a dimension, and this allows for quick association. I think you would agree, this is a great little workflow with so much potential. Views not on sheets. Quickly find unused views. In the project browser, right click the views header and choose browser organization from the pop-up. Then in the dialog, choose not on sheets. Now. All views listed in the browser are not allocated to a sheet and so can be deleted. This is a great way to quickly clean your model. Add parameters to materials. On this finishes schedule, I have added supplier and application location. Both of these parameters have been added manually. Open the Materials dialog and then at the very bottom click Material Parameters. This reveals the parameters that I have made previously. To make new parameters, first go to the Project Parameters tool which is located on the Manage tab. On the right, pick Add. Type the parameter name of your choice. and ensure you assign it to the materials category. That newly created parameter should now be available in the project parameters list. Return to the materials dialog and the material parameters where the newly created parameter should also be listed. Here you can define the value of that parameter for the selected material. The last step is to add that parameter to the schedule. Edit the fields, locate the parameter and transfer it across to the list on the right. The material parameter has now been added into the existing schedule. Orient to view, view sections and elevations or anything else in 3D. Here I have two pre-made sectional views. Now perhaps there is some issue with the modeling detail that you would like to investigate. To view these in 3D, click the home button and then from there move across to the view cube. Right click anywhere on the cube to reveal a drop down menu. Find Orient to View and then from there choose from the options. Here I choose Section and then pick the sectional view that I'd like to review. Selection Tools Control Element Selection You may or not have noticed the tools in the bottom right hand corner. If you have, have you ever wondered what these are for or how these should be used? These are selection tools that control things like selecting pinned elements. For example, on your screen I can pan to the floor and select it. Notice this floor is pinned. I can then move to the selection tools and deactivate the pin selection. Now I can't pick the floor because it has been pinned in place. This is great when working in teams. How about being able to select 
an underlaid element. Let's switch to a floor plan. I will apply an underlay for the ceiling. At the moment, I can't select that ceiling because that selection is deactivated. However, if I turn this on, I can now select the ceiling shown by the underlay. Revit links. Open linked models without closing the host model. This is one that I have shared with a few experienced users who never realized that it is possible to open a linked model without closing the host model. From the browser, under Revit links, simply right click the linked model and then choose open and unload. Revit will then open the linked model in the same instance of Revit. Notice the two tabbed views. One is the link and the other is the host model. You are now free to edit this. I do so by removing some beams. Once the change is complete, save and close. Now I am back in the host model. I can simply reload the edited link. Editing schedules. Edit multiple cells at once. Here I have a sheet schedule which totals 20 sheets. I need to note the total number of sheets on each title block. So the value for this parameter would be 20. To those who are unaware, you would probably copy and paste this value into each cell. That is a very mundane task. The completed schedule lists every sheet instance. So by deselecting the show every instance box and removing any additional filters, the schedule compresses into a single row. Here I can type the required value, which is 20, representing the total number of sheets. I can then reapply the filters and job done. I have quickly edited multiple cells at once. Visual experience activate dark theme. So this is something that's not overly technical and you may have noticed my display during this video. It is not the default Revit gray. Did you know Revit has a dark mode? In the options menu, choose user interface and then find visual experience at the bottom. This is very much in vogue at the moment with phones and tablets. So why not with Revit also? And that brings the tutorial to an end. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found it useful and interesting. If you did, kindly, would you subscribe and give it a thumbs up? And I'll catch you in the next video.